this. <laughs> but inflation is slowing down. Unfortunately, the price is already, uh, it always amazes me how they talk about, well, inflation is slowing down. It's like, yeah, the price is the new baseline is already exorbitantly high and uh, causing people massive amounts of pain, especially uh, poor folks, but the Democrats care so much about them. And actually, that's what I kind of like to, you know, tonight, if we think about why this group is so important. And the reason is because, frankly, you guys are the future. And where are you going to take us? I don't know, but I've had an incredible life. I have lived the American dream. I grew up on a farm in Missouri, middle of nowhere. My family didn't have any money. Didn't have any political connections, no business connections. My dad's retired military. He worked in factories. Mom was a homemaker. You know, didn't know what I was going to do with my life. Was playing basketball, then football. Wanted to play professionally. Hurt uh, my knee very badly, which ended my football career. Trying to figure out what to do, and got involved in professional wrestling because I thought I'd be good at it. Enjoyed it. Was able to propel myself up the ranks. Eventually, I traveled the world, performed in front of millions of people, live and on TV, worked with some of the greatest entertainers on, on the entire planet. Provided a life for my family that I wouldn't have thought possible when I was a kid. Had an impact on other people's lives. One of the coolest things that happens to me now is when people just want to come up and say hello and thank me for providing them with years of entertainment. And I think about how that could be possible for someone like me. The fact that I, I, I grew up on a farm in Missouri. My family didn't have any money and no connections. You know? And I went from there to being a Hall of Fame WWE superstar, to being mayor of the greatest place the entire planet. That really shouldn't be possible, right? Because in most places around the world, where you are born, socioeconomically, that's where you're going to end up for the rest of your life. Unless you, know, you have connections or something like that. But in this country, we have this thing called the American dream. And that says no matter who you are, no matter where you start, that does not determine where you will end up. What determines where you will end up is if you can figure out how to use your God-given gifts and skills and talents to add value to other people's lives. If you're willing to work hard in that endeavor. You get some breaks along the way, and there is no telling how far any of you, anyone, can go in this country. We see it all the time. America is home to the rags to riches story. This is the land of opportunity. That's what's so important for you guys. Because I've had my shot, I've had my American dream. You know? And everything could fall apart for me tomorrow. I don't want it to, but it could. And I can still look back and I can say, man, what a run. It was amazing. What does the future hold for you guys? A lot different than when I was a kid. The things that I had to deal with was completely different. The opportunities that presented themselves to me because we have this thing called a free enterprise system, which to me is the greatest gift that this country has. That we have the freedom and the liberty to live our life like we want to live, as long as we're not hurting anyone else. <laughs> hey, that's what makes this country exceptional, unique, and great. And we forgot. There's a saying that there ain't no such thing as a free lunch, okay? Everything in life has some sort of price. But our friends on the other side of the aisle or whatever, um, they've convinced everyone that there is such a thing as a free lunch. That somehow the government has all this money that only the government has. It has like this, this huge ocean of money that they could just turn on the spigot and we could all be taken care of. It's not how it works. It's 
actually incredibly destructive because what it has done is it has fostered dependency and has taught people that mediocrity is fine. It's no longer about following your dreams. It's just about hand out the government so you can survive. They've also determined now that you know government should be in charge of society. My, my uh, political philosophy is pretty libertarian in that I am a very staunch fiscal conservative. When it comes to social issues, I have my opinion, right? But I don't think the government should be mandating a lot of things. But then you look at what the left does, and that's, you know, they'll say, oh, it's freedom. It's not freedom. It's mandates. I mean, it's okay. If someone wants to do certain things, that's fine. But don't make me approve it, endorse it, celebrate it, or subsidize it, which is where we're at now. You know, the left is all about tolerance and freedom of choice, and they are the most intolerant people on the planet. We saw it with cancel culture, right? If you say the wrong thing, if you voice your opinion, but it's not politically correct, you're going to get punished. What country is that? It ain't the one I grew up in. Freedom of speech means people can say things that you don't want to hear. And you, you, get, you know, sometimes you pay a consequence for that. But at the same time, you know, you shouldn't, government shouldn't be clamping down and saying you can't say that. They certainly should, certainly shouldn't be colluding with social media platforms and saying, no, you can't say that. And oh, it's really not, you know, it's really not a violation of the First Amendment because they're private companies. No, it is a violation of the First Amendment because the government's leaning on them to stop and camper down on free speech. Now we look at what's happening with the Department of Justice. <laughs> never in my life, say what you will about Donald Trump, never in my life would I have thought that a former president of the United States would be indicted on a bunch of A bunch of charges that are completely ridiculous. And the underlying reason, and we all know it, is so he can be taken off the ballot. And then the left talks about election interference. Okay? Look what happened on January 6th. January 6th is, you know, that, that was that was embarrassing. Okay? It was a riot that went bad, and I don't normally talk about this one. It was a riot that went, that went horribly wrong. But compare how the people from January 6th were treated to the folks, for instance, that literally hijacked the Oklahoma State Capitol at one point, to the folks that were attacking federal buildings in Seattle and burning them down. It's a two-tiered system of justice. If you're a conservative, if you're a Republican, you get the book thrown at you. If you're a liberal, if you're a Democrat, it's cool, it's fine. You're just voicing your opinion. You know, I mean, during COVID, right? All of a sudden, we're masked everywhere. No large gatherings. Except for BLM. Except for Antifa. That was cool. You had medical professionals who literally were signing letters and making statements that social justice, you know, we kept on hearing the pandemic's going to kill everybody, but social justice is more important than all these restrictions that we're putting on everybody. That's the world that we live in now. And it ain't gonna get any better until we regain our collective sanity in this country. For far too long, and I'm as guilty as anybody, but for far too long we figured, oh, this is America. That can't happen here. Everything's cool, everything's fine. And if the last few years have not been a wake-up call, in that there are some serious issues and the things that our Constitution and Bill of Rights is there to protect us against, they're happening. And it's going to be up to you all to fix that. It's going to be up to you all to convince your colleagues here at school that there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. That we can disagree about things, and we should do so respectfully. But we have the right to say, I don't agree with that. Or I do agree with this. That the government is not your mommy or your daddy. 
and it shouldn't be playing those roles. The government's there to protect your rights. That's pretty much it. Life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. We completely lost those ideas. And if we keep on going down this road, I will have lived the American dream. What do y'all want to do? Ain't gonna get what I got. The most important thing is opportunity. And somehow, you know, the left has inflated handouts, dependency, social engineering with whatever. But that's more important than the freedoms and liberties that we enjoy. I believe those freedoms and liberties are sacred, they're a gift from God. It's actually an affront to Almighty God if we do not stand up and say, freedoms and the rights that we enjoy in this country, they're sacred. At some point, we always have to say enough is enough. And it really does start with the Republican Party. You know, for years, I was kind of back in the day, and I would think about politics and um, going back to like the early 90s. There wasn't a whole lot of difference between the parties, actually. Some people say I'm wrong, but there wasn't. Like, I remember, I think it was uh, Clinton and George H.W. Bush, and they were talking about the highest marginal tax income tax rate, 39 and a half percent, but as opposed to 36 percent, right? It's a three percent difference, right? Clinton thought when it came to abortion, his he famously said that he wanted abortions to be safe, legal, but for everybody. Look at a lot of the other issues, and there was, you know, there was a little bit of difference, but there was not that much. Now there's tremendous amounts of difference. Democrats would tax you to death if they can get away with it. There's nothing that they don't want to tax, and there's no limit to what they want to tax. You know, abortion, now there's a difference, and I'm very pro-life, right? There's a difference between being pro-choice and pro-abortion. There's a difference between saying a woman, a woman has a choice, I understand that, right? And celebrating the murder of kids. And that, sadly, is what this whole thing has you know, turned into. You know, you look at gun control, and it's all, you know, we just want to put common sense restrictions on guns. Problem is, that always quickly morphs into, well, we have to buy guns back. We have a certain limited guns. We can't allow people to have guns. We need to register all the guns. Every place around the world that they have had universal gun registration, guess what the next step is? Confiscation. There's a huge difference in that. To me, the Republican Party has found its roots again. It's become the party of Reagan, the party of lower taxes, small government, respect for the individual, American first foreign policy. What we need to be. Democrats have become. The, they are actually, you know, I used to say that like European democratic socialism, they've gone way beyond that. I mean, when you see European countries now that are, are more conservative than one of our major political parties, we have a huge issue in this country. Then we look at Tennessee. Greatest state in the union by far. Yeah. That's right. Lowest tax burden, state local taxes, tremendous economic growth, no debt, business friendly opportunity. We have businesses coming here all the time because they're just sick and tired of the blue states, especially places like California, New York, and Illinois. I think the most important thing that, that we can do, you know, we all look at the federal government, and it's really important. But then we kind of ignore state and local stuff, right? And we can see it in our elections. In 2018, uh, when I ran uh, the first time, and we had a contested governor's race in the primary, I run in the same cycle. It's actually it's, uh, very strange, but locally we run in the same cycle as um, our general election will be the same time as the, uh, the federal and the state primaries. But in any case, also, you know, you're ramping up for presidential election, 
you had a contested congressional race, you had all these different things, and fast forward to 2022, when I ran again, voter turnout was down 30% because those federal races weren't on the ballot. But here's the kicker. That came almost exclusively from Republican voters. And that was one of our big fears, right? It's like, we have to watch out here, folks, because this is gonna be a lot tighter than it should be. In 2018, I won 63% of the vote in my general election. In 2022, it was 55 to 45. I lost, what, eight points. And it wasn't just me. I'm you can argue I was a bad candidate, whatever. It wasn't just me, it was countywide. Every single seat was like that. And then it had impacts like on our school board races, where we had, we had a great candidate uh, in one of our school board races, and our school board's pretty good at five to four, okay? We could have gone to six to three, but because of low voter turnout, this really great candidate lost. We almost lost a commission seat. Imagine what happens in Austin County then. Imagine what happens to our schools. If all of a sudden it flips and it's 5-4 the other way, and we're just like Loudoun County, Virginia. I guess the amazing thing to me was for 18 months, that's all people saw on the news, and they still didn't turn out to vote. Because the reason is we're all so fixated on federal stuff, we forget about state and local stuff. There's a lot of issues in the federal government I think one of the most important things that we can do here in Tennessee is literally to build a bulwark and a firewall around Tennessee to keep a lot of this, a lot of these policies that come from the federal government to keep them out, okay? And to build this up to be the best, be the best already, but to be an even better state and a beacon for the rest of the country. We have a lot of people moving here from these blue states, as I mentioned. And the reason that they're coming here is because they're searching for America. What makes America great? And they find it here. So we've got to keep that up. I think, again, one of the most important things that we, that we have to do is really to buttress our state and local governments as much as possible. You know, Because I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen with the federal government. I'm very much worried, <laughs> I think we all do, about this next election. And I think next year is gonna be Incredibly odd, strange year, one of the weirdest in American history. But what we can do here is as much as possible, we can try to insulate ourselves from it. But it's, it's gonna be up to you guys at some point, very soon. All these things, it's your world. People like me, people like Buddy, Brian, you know, we've had our time. What are you gonna do with it? Thank y'all so very much, and uh, I will take some questions now if that's okay. I'm not going to sing again.